Hello and welcome to News Click's show Mapping Fault Lines, where we discuss major geopolitical issues from around the world. Today we are going to be talking about the situation in Haiti where the de facto president Jonal Moïse was assassinated a few days ago, caused a huge wave of shock, especially because Haiti over the past few months and years has been undergoing a lot of a huge crisis. There has been a constitutional crisis in the country over the past few months after Moïse's term expired. He was proposing amending the constitution of 1987 in a manner which many had described was illegal. There was a huge amount of insecurity on the ground in the capital and other cities, armed gangs, violent gangs. Meanwhile, there's also been waves and waves of protest against Moises continuing in power, the kind of reforms and changes he's sought to bring. So Haiti has been going through a very difficult situation right now and this assassination is definitely likely to further things, uh, further, further the crisis. We have with us Prabir Purkayasa to talk not only about the current situation but also the historical context of Haiti, the way in which things have developed over the past few decades, in fact even over the past few centuries. Prabir, thank you so much for joining us. So quick question on the current situation right now, how do you see the build up right now, especially after the assassination and also the crisis over the past few years? Well, you talked about the uh, crisis of legitimacy of the current government, including the assassinated President Moshe, but also the who is the Prime Minister currently, the multiple claimants to the position of the Prime Minister. So we don't know who is going to be in charge of the country. You're right that Haiti has been passing through very difficult times. Uh, this assassination is also extremely strange because we don't know what are the political or other forces behind the assassination. That's not clear. It's clear that ex colombian servicemen were involved in the hit. It seems they have come from Colombia. And there are also two uh, Haitian Americans who are also involved in the hit who claim they had been hired as translators and their task of this group was to uh, quote unquote seize the president but not kill him. So we are completely unclear at the moment what are the uh, forces which have led to the assassination. It doesn't appear to be an American backed assassination because Moishi was quite close to the Americans. Right. So in, in that sense I do not think it's a coup at the moment at least. I don't think it's a coup. So why Colombian uh, ex-servicemen would be involved in an assassination is still a mystery. It could possibly be a revenge for some drug uh, action that the president might have taken against some of the drug lords in Haiti. So that's, an, uh, that's something that we don't know. What we do know, and I think that's the important part, the fact that Haiti is represented to the world as a failed nation, and this has been going on for the last 20 years that we can remember. And that this hides the fact that it's a failed nation because it was made to fail. And it was made to fail because the colonial powers joined with the United States never forgave Haiti for the fact that overthrown slavery. And in fact, when you talk about the age of revolutions, the American Revolution is mentioned, the French Revolution is mentioned, but the most significant one in the sense that they overthrew not only colonial rule, but also slavery. That revolution, the Haitian Revolution, is never mentioned. It's sort of something which has fallen into oblivion. And Haiti's representation as a failed country, as a consequence of the revolution, has been completely wiped out from memory. We have wiped out the fact that the French extracted a huge indemnity from the Haitians because they freed themselves from being slaves. And they had to pay the price of the slaves to France. And they paid that for almost, till I think, till 1947. Huge drain. In the 19th century, that was 80% of Haiti's national income. So that was the drain that was right. taken from them. And the next 100 years, the 20th century, from early 20th century onwards, it has been a de facto American colony or completely subservient to America. Any president, any power which to seized Haiti's leadership, which did not count out to America, was not allowed to uh, last. So this is Haiti's uh, position for the last 200 years. And the consequence is it was handed over to NGOs with UN forces at one point. The, when the uh, earthquake struck, more than 300,000 people died. 
the United Nations came in. Then, of course, the United Nations peacekeepers also, it is claimed, brought in uh, cholera into the country. So all of these consequences which Haiti faces today is a consequence of the, the revolt, the successful revolt of the slaves in Haiti right. and the fact that they were never forgiven for that with all the colonial powers ganging up against Haiti. Absolutely. Right, in that context, the United States' role also significant because Haiti is one of the classic examples of how the, what is called the Monroe Doctrine was imposed over close to a century in terms of direct U.S. occupation as well, but also the dictatorships. So could you talk a bit about that as well? You know, it's interesting, Monroe Doctrine initially did not involve the Caribbeans. So that's a later expansion, right. in fact. And of course, it was a clear expansion that regarded the Caribbean as basically a part of their sphere of influence, which others would not be allowed to contest. This is the neocolonial expansion of the United States, which really takes place in the 20th century. Started in the late 19th century, but really in the 20th century, when it extends its... Uh, uh, claims over the whole of that of Latin America as well as the Caribbeans. Now, in this, if you look at Haiti, it was ruled. The Americans ruled it ruled it directly. They think under Woodrow Wilson, they landed troops over there, seized Haiti, and ran it for about twenty years before handing it over to various uh, quislings of theirs, including the infamous Papa Dog du Duavillier and Baby Doc, his son who ruled it for, I think, about 20, 25 years. And this is one of the most brutal regimes anywhere in the world. Now, all that is recorded, but what is not recorded, why did the US hand over Haiti to such a despised dictatorship? And the answer is because they saw it as a base for against Cuba. So therefore, they were willing to have anything happen in Haiti as long as they could use it for the purpose of uh, trying to bring down the Cuban re, uh, revolutionary government. So that is, that is a, in a short nutshell, what happens in the 20th century. But the interesting part is what happens in the 19th century. Could you first take us to the colonial aspect or the colonial, uh, how the uh, colonial powers basically exploited Haiti because that seems to be a very integral part of how, the, of the current situation today, including how the United States the when the, Saint, the, the French set up Saint Domingo, by that time the original population had been completely decimated. Uh, Columbus and the Spaniards had taken care of that. The, uh, really, the decimation of the island populations in this. One third was in the French Saint Domingo, the two thirds was what becomes the Dominican Republic later, but the Spani Spaniards. In this one third, the first major plantation economy takes place. And in fact, San Domingo at that point of time was the largest sugar producer in the world as well as a major coffee producer. Right. And France, its wealth came from San Domingo. Therefore, the plantations were in some sense important for the development of capitalism in France. And they did not therefore want to part with it when the Haitian slaves declared the essentially uh, the same slogans as what led to the revolution, the uh, bourgeois revolution in France. So that same declaration, when they applied it to Haiti, the French said, the French, whatever was the ruling parliament at that point of time, said, no, 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 that's for the French. It's not for the Haitians, it's not for the slaves. Slaves are inferior. They have to remain slaves, they are property. So then led to a uh, battle of independence and against slavery by the Haitians, Napoleon sent 40,000 troops under one of his family members who lost. And therefore, in 1804, they had to cede power to the Haitian uh, revolution. Having done that, they did not recognize it, neither did the United States. In 1824, I think 24, 25, they blockaded Haiti with warships, supported by Jefferson, who in fact said at one point that we cannot let the Haitian disease spread. Disease meaning, of course, freeing of the slaves, because Jefferson himself was a slave owner, as well as the United States, of course, was a major slave-owning nation. So, you, this, it's interesting. Uh, Britain, France, United States was in war of a different kinds in North America. 
But when it came to Haiti, all three combined, including of course the Spaniards right. as well, to see that the slave revolt should not spread, spread from Haiti. And the, uh, what they did was to use reparations. That your freed slaves, one slave cost so much, this is your debt to France for having freed the slaves and therefore you have to pay reparations. And 80% of the national income of Haiti at that point went in the 19th century to pay the reparations. Then of course the 20th century which is direct US neo colony. So you replace France with actually the United States. But let's not forget this entire exercise was backed by all the colonial powers because that was the basis of the colonial empires. Uh, first sugar, then cotton, and in the case of India and China, as you know, opium. India was producing opium for subverting China and, of course, paying for all the imports the British would make from China. Thank you, Prabir, for talking to us. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching.